Assalamu alaikum, my name is Fadma Wazwaz and I am going to be doing a podcast, as I mentioned, on listening to God. I did in my Ramadan Mubarak um, blog um, share a video by Muhammad Abdul Latif, who also did something about listening to God. His perspective was different and I respect people who can speak about the same things I speak, but it's their own unique voice and their own unique perspective. And um, I find it uh, beneficial if it's, I benefited from it, even though I've been writing on these issues, to read someone who wrote or did a video on something similar, but um, also a lot of wisdom and insightful uh, from his perspective. The context of this particular podcast is for quite a long time, I've been engaged in interfaith discussions, um, discussions briefly with the restorative justice um, training is what I had received mainly. And I've done some speeches about Palestinian uh, restorative justice called Sulha. Um, also, another context is being on like in discussions uh, regarding xenophobia, Islamophobia, and I was invited to some panels regarding uh, racism, uh, given that I'm Palestinian, Arab, and then also discussing issues regarding misogyny. So I am not mentioning, or what I am mentioning in this podcast should not be applied because the wisdom, um, or if you will, the application of Any beneficial knowledge requires a level of expertise to know where the individual that you're giving advice to um, is on the map. You can't just throw pop pill type um, quotes at people and think that A, they're related to them or B, that this is beneficial. Uh, That lacks intelligence and extremely insincere. So to begin, I would like to say that I always, like I said, and like for every blog, like to start with a quote. And in this particular quote on listening to God, I like the quote by Paul Tillich, I think is how he says his name, T-I-L-L-I-C-H. And he, I like that quote a lot when I first saw it, and I'm assuming it's his quote. Um, the first duty of love is to listen. And as I'm focusing on this particular blog, I'm also focusing on the name of God, Asemia. So I like to look at several case scenarios, if I may, and I'm going to begin with one. Again, because I always must say, uh, put on the right glasses, my image, my honor, my reputation. Um, And in this particular case in point, there's a narration on the Prophet's cousin, Imam Ali ibn Abu Talib. He was fighting an enemy with his sword, ready to deal the final blow. Then the enemy spit in his face. Ali refused to continue the battle as the fight became personally motivated. We learn from this incident that whether in battle or in discussion, when conflicts or a fight becomes poisoned with personal angst, the wisest thing to do is to ground oneself and remove the personal angst. Till the personal angst is removed, then the discussion can continue. There are many roads in the valley of importance in the face of adversity, and many lead to loss and perpetual suffering. At times, we find ourselves at a junction where there are many voices that are giving us advice. And I call them the adviceaholics or the meddlers, um, people who you did not solicit advice from. Um, They come across as, first of all, not intelligent, and they're certainly uh, not sincere. However, all of these voices, if you can differentiate between your soul and your ego. If you listen with your soul, it will kind of identify that these voices are not intelligent and sincere and help you to go the straight path. Because these particular individuals, um, they do not 
offer you guidance they offer you a mumbo jumbo validation and if you will a cocktail of conjecture false assumptions projections and it leads to misunderstandings and name calling whereas the voices of guidance they seek to center and ground you so you could see the roads ahead choose the road to travel with wisdom and reflection it's for this reason that god guides us to show patience in times of adversity uh, so we can reflect and follow the road of guidance not the one the many roads like i said of validation and conformity i had mentioned as and i said the name of god as is the one who is all hearing so he doesn't just listen to the words, but he also can read our hearts, our thoughts, our emotions. And sometimes he helps us to see or read or listen to our own soul and to look beyond the hurt, which usually our ego takes over and um, starts to speak on our behalf. So as I continue with this particular one, I want to focus on a case, another case in point, and this is from the Quran. It's in chapter 9, verse 61. It says, among them are men who abuse the prophets and say he's all ear. Say he listens to what is best for you. He believes in Allah, has faith in the believers, and is a mercy to those of you who believe. But those who abuse the messenger will have a grievous penalty in another verse in the in the quran it says i listen to the prayer of every supplicant when he calleth on me let them also with a will listen to my call and believe in me that they may walk in the right way so this is verse um, 186 in chapter 2 al-baqarah if you look at both of these verses together you could see that the name as samia as samia i should say um, or the all hearing, that uh, compassionate listening when, you, when we speak to God and when we raise our complaints or um, our pain or our suffering or our confusion or our misguidance, that we also see that same type of compassionate listening in Prophet Muhammad upon him, peace and blessings. But if we put on the glasses again of my image my honor my reputation we see that that type of beauty beautiful character where you're a compassionate listener um, was mocked it was mocked by society and it was mocked by if you will people so people did not recognize this as a beautiful quality had he tried to fit in or seek validation from society he would have had to give up this beautiful quality or beautiful character that now we appreciate. And it's very much also a beautiful character, one of the beautiful natures, if you will, of God. To summarize like some of these characteristics, I want to give also other examples that I've been like when I read about Prophet Muhammad. Um, upon him, peace and blessings, we always confuse spiritual um the station of spiritual ihsan um of magnanimity and excellence with spiritual sometimes abuse um the prophet upon him peace and blessings when he was like when it was his rights more often than not he would forego like his rights and forgive you when it came to the rights of others however then that was not his call to tell people or demand from people to forgive you. So the Prophet upon him, peace and blessings, would, um, for example, if someone came who was not a relative of his and demanded the rights of a very notable or prominent person uh, in his family, like, and said, you know, this person uh, owes me money or owes me something, he would stand up and go and, and seek his rights from his kin. With the, and this is a kin who had strong social standing. Um, when it was of someone who came to seek their rights and they asked for their rights in a way that was, you might say, not civil, 
the prophet would still give them their right, but then he would address their behavior afterwards. And he even nurtured um, Umar, um, radiallahu anhu, one of the companions of the prophet, because he got angry when people sought their rights in a way that lacked civility. And he told him to first give him his rights and then order me to give him his rights and then um, ask him, you know, tell him to ask for it kindly. But there's another case where, that I would like you, that I would like to address. And this is about how the Prophet Muhammad and God um, together, if you will, um, how they um, have this listening and it's a listening that does not uh, transgress the bounds where it, it creates spiritual abuse or abuse of others. So I mentioned this in one of in some of my posts and also in discussions over the years. In around 2006, I wrote a post also on this. It's by Khawla bint Thalaba, and this is the companion where a chapter uh, was mentioned or titled after her, The Woman Who Complained, the Mujadala. And it was narrated that she was married to Aus ibn al Samit. He's another companion. I don't want to go into details about their marital issues, but the social ill at the time was misogyny, where a man can uh, say an utterance and divorce his wife in a very uh, disrespectful and abusive manner. So the woman comes to complain to Prophet Muhammad upon him peace and blessings. Now notice how he responds. He doesn't belittle her complaint. He doesn't mock her. He doesn't say, oh, look at her complaining. Uh, he doesn't address her in a way that diminishes her sense of self-worth. He doesn't even infantilize her. But he doesn't also cook up, you might say, a cocktail of snake oil treatments, conjecture, projections, um, if you will, false assumptions or come up with this cool spiritual, um, um, you might say whip up some sort of whatever just so that she can be happy and be pleased with him. So he's not here trying to um, transgress those boundaries and just say Whatever he thinks, he's not getting into assumptions and into, you know, he's just not going there. He stops where he needs to stop. That's a compassionate listener. He's not driven. He doesn't speak out of desire and he's not driven by his ego. Listening to his soul, someone's coming to complain. His nature is that he's patient in, in issues that with his spouses, with people in general. So he offers her to be patient. That's all he can give her is what he practices. He does not transgress the bound and try to um, get in, you know, allow his ego to come up with all these snake oil treatments and offer it to her, uh, causing pain or suffering, nor does he meddle, nor does he say things that are outside uh, his ability to do so. Look at his compassion. This is, people sometimes confuse compassion. So this is all he offers her. Now, Khawla responds to him that she's going to go to God himself. She doesn't, of course, like say anything negative to the prophet, but she wanted something and he couldn't give her what he didn't have. The important part to note here is how the prophet again responded and so she goes to God. God sends down revelation to the prophet. Now, he's not, if he was full of prejudice, that he didn't give her something because out of prejudice or misogyny, then he would not have been able to receive the revelation from God that came down in her defense. Um, and the language was bold. It was firm. It was strong. A big penalty was described for such behaviors that her husband engaged in. How you feel about it, if you cried, are all irrelevant matters. The Prophet was able to receive this revelation at a time when misogyny was prevalent in society and he was able to share it with the community. Her rights were restored, the man was penalized, a social ill was called out boldly and strongly, a community was educated, the powerless and helpless 
breathed a sigh of relief. Now it opens another door for conversation. This is again about all hearing as well, you know, Samir, as well as Prophet Muhammad upon him, peace and blessings, who also was all ear. I'm just trying to focus on both of these and how they work together. With God being a Samir and the Prophet being all ear and the compassion and how it, <coughs> excuse me, how it works and how it unfolds. Prophet Muhammad upon him, peace and blessings, told her, let him release a slave. He's a, he has a penalty. This is being called out. Again, he's not saying that out of ego. God sent down revelation and he's delivering the revelation. She responds. Now look at how she responds. Oh, messenger of Allah, he does not have the means to do that. And then the prophet says, oh, let, let him fast for two consecutive months. And she says, by Allah, he's an old man. He's not able to do that. So as you're noticing, she's going from complaining about what this person has done to her to now on her own defending. And, and this is the beauty of all hearing and, and the prophet, the compassionate listener, is at times they help you to listen to yourself. They help you, as I said with Imam Ali, detect uh, your soul from your ego. So she's now letting go of her, the hurt and the ego, and now she's listening to her soul, and her soul is now responding to what she knows, to what sometimes the ego might shut down um, because of the hurt and the pain. So now she's responding, and she's saying, well, oh, Messenger Allah, he does not have, <clears throat> excuse me, he asked her to fast for two months, and she said he's not able to do that, he's an old man. And let him feed 60 poor people. Then the Prophet told him. And she said, oh, Messenger of Allah, he does not have that much. So she's now defending and defending. So he says, well, then we will help him. And she responds that she will contribute to the penalty fee. And this is the beauty of as Samir, is He makes you hear at times your soul. He makes you hear what you have maybe are not listening to. Um... So he says, you have done um, right and done well. Go and give in charity on his behalf. Then take care of your husband properly. So God is wise and he knows what is behind our complaints. Now, again, I cannot give this as a pop pill approach for everybody. But the process uh, can help you understand if someone is an abuser and you need to just shut him down. Uh, someone is a charlatan and they need to be just silenced or someone is genuinely uh, needs some guidance and you have to help them hear themselves, not hear you, but hear themselves. Or somebody is uh, oppressed or abused in the case of the Bedouin who came to Prophet Muhammad. And you have to go and stand with him and go to your relative and who has strong social standing and defend him on his behalf. Someone who may be outside your circle and they're coming to ask their rights from you. In this case, you should be able to, while address their uncivil way that they have approached you, you should still give them their rights and encourage your companions to uh, admonish you to give them his rights as well as to ask for it in a kind manner. So we could see how a Samia and the all hearing, uh, if you will, the all ear prophet upon him, peace and blessings, uh, work together uh, with that compassion and that mercy. He was able to receive the mercy of God because his heart was merciful and he was able to deliver it to people in a merciful manner as well. So please reflect on this and I appreciate your feedback. But again, this is my perspective just in a brief nutshell of what I've been discussing over the years in many um, discussions or like I said, um, with inner faith as well as issues of xenophobia. So I thank you very much and I appreciate your listening um, and I hope this is beneficial. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you all.